welcome to the Big Blue Amusement Productions podcast. I am Caleb, and I want to welcome you to this podcast. Well, 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 well. Let me say, it's been a la- uh, weird and rough last few hours. I finally had the time to fully digest what we witnessed last night. And before I get into of course, I gotta give all my credit and hats off to the St. Peter's Peacocks. You played your butts off, and you deserve to advance in this tournament. If we, Kentucky Wildcats, would have found a way to win, we would have not deserved it. It would have felt like we would have not deserved to win. St. Peter's was the better team. They played like the better team, and so they advance. That End of story. Podcast over. Just kidding. <laughs> That has to be the worst loss I have ever watched in my few years of being a a Wildcat. Yes, worse than Evansville, worse than Richmond, and yeah, worse than all those like the Kansas State loss in the Sweet 16, the Auburn loss in the Elite Eight. Yeah, this tops them all. That was a horrible horrible way to end the season and in my and like i said in last video that falls on the head coach john calipari i had skyline chili for lunch today as you can see i I love ordering skyline it's just if you love skyline chili put it down in the comments below i live in cincinnati so i have a, a multiple skylines close to me so anyway So, last night's game, I don't know what to say. It's just, Cal said he was re- he put a tweak in. I saw no tweak. I saw absolutely no tweak. And we didn't look like we changed at all since the Tennessee loss in the SEC tournament. And like I said after the Tennessee game, I would not be shocked if we lose in the first round, and it turns out I was right. I was correct that we would lose in the first round after what I saw against Tennessee in the SEC tournament. That same team showed up, and they got knocked out on their head. It was ridiculous, and that's just pathetic that it came to that. Which is what brings me to this next point, and that is the the downfall of the University of Kentucky men's basketball program. Yes, I do believe we're on a downfall, and I'm going to explain why. To um, for example, if before we talk about it, I want to name some examples of teams that have been kind of prominent in the past. And are on a downfall. And have been on a downfall. Those teams include the Indiana Hoosiers post Bobby Knight. They haven't really recovered after firing Bobby Knight. Yes, they had those moments. um, Like that 2013 uh, team that was ranked number one at the time with Tom Crean. Where they had um, Christian Watford. They had Christian, Christian Watford, Cody Zeller, all them. But it's just they've had spurts, but they haven't really been over the hump like they used to be under night. Next, I'll talk about the Syracuse Orange. They're, they've been on a downfall for a long time, actually, for several times. Like, they used to be a prominent force with Jim Boheim, and they still have Jim Boheim. And this is the thing. If we keep Cal and we keep putting up with mediocrity like this, we're going to end up like Syracuse with Jim Boheim. Jim Boheim hasn't really gotten his team back to where they used to be. It's like, like Jim Boheim used to be a really top coach. He's in the Hall of Fame, but coaches don't always stay that way. The game tends to pass them by, and that's what happened to Jim Boheim. And he's still there, and they're settling with mediocrity. If we're gonna continue like this, we need to stop settling for mediocrity. Like. If, if we're going to accept mediocrity, that's just how it's going to be. We need to stop sets. Like, things need to change or we're going to end up like Syracuse. 
Next, we're going to talk about... Next, we're going to talk about UCLA. Yes, they're, they've been kind of on uh, a, a rise like last year and this year, but after John Wooden, where he won like multiple national championships in a row, uh, actually, UCLA has kind of been in this like ditch kind of thing. Like up until now, they've been on like a ditch where they have not really been as good as they used to be. Like, they were, like, mid-pack in the Pac-12. And it's, like, I'm glad to see them that they're finally up and going again. But um, but UCLA um, used to be kind of a... That's a team that was on a downfall for a while. But they seem to be getting back up in it. Now we're going to talk about West Virginia. West Virginia, with Bob Huggins, he, um... They, um, used to be... Like, in the early days of Bob Huggins at West Virginia, like, he took him to a Final Four in the earlier days of Bob Huggins. Like, he took him to a Final Four. But now they haven't, but then it was basically all downhill from that. Like, West Virginia used to be real, a pretty good force in basketball, but they, um, have, but they're a team that has been on a downfall. And then the final team I'm going to talk about isn't really the best team to talk about, but it's a it's one of my local teams, the Cincinnati Bearcats. Like when Cincinnati Bearcats had Bob Huggins, UC used to be a prominent force. They were kind of a prominent force. Like they would go to the Final Four. They would like they would win games. They would be good. But they've been on a downfall a lot recently. They've had those moments, like under Mick Cronin, when they had Mick Cronin, they had those moments, but they never really got over the hump. And you see, missed the tournament again, and they haven't really been. And recently, you see, has been in this slump. Hopefully, Wes Miller will be able to turn them around and make them back into a prominent force again. Maybe, and once they join the Big Twelve, they'll be able to maybe win the Big Twelve some and make the tournament. But we'll see about that. Now for the Kentucky Wildcats downfall, we need to go to two thousand, like the. When Cal Perry got hired in 2009, Cal Perry started out on fire. Like, he went to the Elite Eight his first year. That's good. Then, Final Four. Then, National Championship 2012 with Anthony Davis. And then, the, then a big dip with the NIT that year in 2013. Then... And then back to the championship game, but lost to UConn. Then 2015, you had that undefeated season. That and then ended up in the and then you get bounced by Wisconsin in the Final Four. And then here's where the downfall sort of begins. 2016, second round lost to Indiana. 2017, Elite Eight lost to North Carolina. And then 2018, Sweet 16, Kansas State. And in 2019, Elite Eight lost to Auburn. And then 2020, looked to be we looked to make some sort of a run, but there were no tournament due to COVID. And then we're, here's where it really starts to fall off. 2021, only win nine games and not make a postseason. And then 2022, out first round to a 15 seed in St. Peter's. As you've noticed... For Kentucky Wildcats and yes, you might be saying, well, Caleb, Elite Eights are good. Elite Eights is something to celebrate. Well, the K University of Kentucky, we celebrate championships, Final Fours. Like, go to Rupp Arena and see the eight banners hanging in the rafters for all those championships. Final Four appearances. Like, we're not Tennessee who hangs banners for, for NIT appearances, okay? We don't hang banners for Elite Eight appearances. We hang banners for championships and Final Fours. So, yes, to some teams, Elite Eights will be a success. Look at Xavier. Xavier literally hung a banner for going to the Elite Eight. But to Kentucky? Just going to Elite Eights in the past few years is sort of a downfall. We haven't been to the Final Four since 2015. And this is sound, these last few years of Cal sounds very reminiscent to the last few years of Tubby Smith. And you know, here's the sad thing. Tubby Smith did less. He, Tubby Smith 
did not miss the tournament. Tubby Smith did not lose first round to a 15 seed. Like, our fans were legit putting for sale signs in his yard for losing to a for losing in the second round to Kansas, who was a better team that year. But yet we're settling for and we're accepting a 9 and 16 season last year. We're accepting a first round loss to St. Peter's. Which, by the way, St. Peter's whole budget. Do you know the University of Kentucky pays Coach Calipari more than St. Peter's University's budget? Whole budget. If that if is that worth nine million dollars a year? Pay nine million dollars a year to lose to a team whose whole budget university's whole budget is less than what you pay your coach. Like, that's stealing money, coach. You catch a paycheck. I, you need to get a pay deduction this offseason. You need to get a pay deduction. And no, they are not going to fire Coach Cal. Yes, I know. I said fire Coach Cal in my last video. That was the initial reaction. That's called an initial reaction to that game. But here's the thing. Coach Cal's buyout is like $60 million. Money does not grow on trees. They're not going to pay that much to fire a Hall of Fame coach. That's just not going to happen. The only way Coach Calipari leaves the University of Kentucky is if he retires, which will probably come in the next 5-10 years. He's getting up there in age. Or he voluntarily resigns like Tubby did. No, Tubby did not get fired. There are people out there who say, we fired Tubby for all this. Like, no, we did not fire Tubby. He left on his own because of all the pressure he was facing with the fan base and the administration. They didn't fire Tubby. He left on his own. Tubby was fired from the next few schools he went to. He was fired from Minnesota. He was fired from Memphis. Like, I'm saying, we didn't fire Tubby. He left on his own. Like, here's the thing. If I spend $9 million a year, if I get paid $9 million a year to coach the team, and we coach them to and find ways to choke the game like this, like, we were up six points in overtime. We were up six points. They went zone. And typical Coach Cal doesn't know how to adjust to the zone. He made no adjustments whatsoever. None. Zero adjustments. Did not adjust to the zone that St. Peter's did, which cost them the game. Like in, in our last several games I could talk about, the defensive breakdowns, like, Whenever we would go up a bit, a certain amount, they would answer right back and go on a run. That's what costs us the game, again. And Cal's inability to call timeouts. He had three timeouts and didn't call them. That's the thing. He has a track record of burning timeouts, blowing timeouts, and he didn't use them. And blowing timeouts in key situations, like against Notre Dame, against LSU, like at the end of the Mississippi State regulation, like he had timeouts but doesn't call them. That's what costs us the game, and that falls on him. Like, when is enough going to be enough? Like, they're not going to fire him, but are we going to put up with mediocrity? That's the thing we need to discuss. Are we going to put up with a downfall? Of our program. Elite eights aren't an, always enough. Yeah, a couple elite eights. They may be good for some programs like Xavier, but they may not but they're not acceptable for a program like Kentucky, who hasn't made the final four since 2015. And now we're turning around around and starting to lose to teams and going like nine and sixteen in a year. That's like and 
the We Are Young thing is not applying this year. Did not apply. We had Cal's most experienced team since 2015. Like, we had Oscar Sheboy, who's going to win National Player of the Year, though. And he played his butt off. Did you see him at the end of the game? He was crying because his whole team let him down. Oscar Shibwe deserved to win the game. And his team and coach let him down. Like, Oscar Shibwe was our best player in that game, and he deserved to, he was the one who deserved to win the game. He deserves more than what we're giving him. Like, and then you have players like Shavir Wheeler, Kellen Grady, Keon Brooks, who's a third year. Like, we had experience this year. It's not just freshmen like last year. We had experience, and now we get bounced in the first round. That's coaching. Like, we need to have this discussion. Like, like it, a few years ago, I used to call all the fire Cal, all the Cal can't coach um, crowds crazy. I used to think they were idiots. But after this performance in last year, it need, we need to start having this discussion. And... You know, the, you know, the thing is, people are starting to do this. People are starting to question him. Like, the media is starting to question him. Look look up John Calipari on website. Like, and, like, even, like, big-name media people are starting to question him, are starting to wonder if he's the right fit for the job. Like, I don't know. I don't know what to say, guys. Like, I don't know what to say, guys. It's very... Just, I don't know what the future is going to hold. Are we going to go down to the basement and not be relevant for like 20 plus years like Indiana is? Like Indiana is? Or Syracuse? Like it's just... If we're going to become IU, we need to start making changes. Because we are going on that route to becoming IU. Or Syracuse. Like... I don't know what to say anymore. It's just... I I don't know. It's just... It's just a conversation we need to have. It's like... I don't know, guys. I just don't know what to say anymore. All I can say is we are experiencing a downfall. And the downfall after we lost to Wisconsin in the Final Four, our program started going on a steady decline like this. Like, we haven't been to the Final Four since then. Like, it's just... I don't know what to say anymore. All I can say is, Coach Cal, get your stuff together, or... Or get out. Get your stuff together or retire or pull a tubby and leave. And find someone who can bring like the program together. Louisville just hired Kenny Payne. And at this rate, they're going to own us. They're going to start winning a lot more with Kenny Payne. Like Kenny Payne may have been the reason we went to the Elite Eight those last few years. We have been somewhat relevant. Like Kenny Payne may have been the reason. And then once Kenny Payne leaves... Like, is it a co only a coincidence that the year Kenny Payne leaves is the year we go 9-16? and 16? Like, I don't know what to say anymore. Thank you, everything, Oscar Sheboy. Please come back next year. I'd love to have you back. But if not, thank you for basically helping us, because without Oscar Shibwe, we probably would have went to the NIT. Mm -hmm. Like, we are also lucky that we peaked in January and won at Kansas and beat Tennessee like that, because I think without those, we wouldn't make the tournament. Like, like this, like this will go down as an utter collapse to, to end the season. And that falls on the head coach. 
So thank you guys for joining this podcast. And I'll see you guys some future podcasts. And since the basketball season's over, I'm going to start doing more roller coaster stuff as the theme park stuff is starting to get going. King's Island opens in less than a month. So once King's Island releases all the information for their 50th anniversary, I will actually do a full news video discussing it and explaining more things. So stay tuned for that. I also have some park plans this year that you'll be the first to know that um, if you watch the end here, and you'll be the first to know it's not completely set in stone yet, but it's very likely in the middle of June, I will be going to Universal. So Velocicoaster, Hagrid's, I'll get those credits, hopefully. So I'll definitely do a video there. So go Cats, and I'll see you guys next time.